So the show that had everyone talking last year is back with the season two on Netflix, and that is you. Does season two give us some new and interesting plot line and new characters, or do we find ourselves repeating the same things from season one? But more importantly, should you be watching this over the weekend? Well, we're going to talk about that and much more. You season two. To escape Candace and his ghost from his past in New York City, Joe changes his name and moves to Los Angeles, vowing to start fresh and change his ways. But then he meets Love, his charming new co-worker. What is going on, everybody? Elliot back with a new TV review, and today we're talking about season two of You. Very excited to share my thoughts with you all in this video, but before we dive into it, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that bell so you can stay up to date with my latest TV reviews, movie reviews, and all the fun things we do on this channel. And if and when you've seen this season of You, I want to know what you all thought of this season. Did you enjoy this season more than season one, or did you vice versa? Are you looking forward to seeing a, a potential season three? And if so, let me know what your theories are. And let me know some of your favorite characters from this latest season of You. Let me know in the comments below. And let's have some fun discussions down there. So very similar format to what I did on my Witch review last week. I'm going to spend the first half of this video kind of talking about just my general thoughts of the show. No spoilers for those that haven't seen this season thus far. But just giving you my thoughts to let you know if it's worth checking out. But then those that have been all 10 episodes like I have, I'm going to spend the last half of this video kind of talking about more in depth my pros my cons talking about the spoilers of the show so definitely for those that didn't watch the show once you've seen it watch the second half where you can join the discussion of all those spoilers so let's jump into my non-spoiler portion of this video so first and foremost I was a fan of season one there were some things I didn't really like about it and particularly the relationship between Beck and Joe not the toxic relationship just I didn't think the chemistry was all that great between the two characters I didn't think the performances were off I just didn't think they had the best chemistry so there were definitely elements that I liked about season one and there's some things I didn't like, but I was very intrigued about going into this new season one. I'm just like, okay, what can they do differently? You know, I'm a fan of Dexter and this definitely has some Dexter flavor with a different twist to it because I think, you know, it's not to justify one's better than the other, but Dexter was a, you know, police officer taking out criminals and Joe, not so much. He's taking out people that he's thinking he's doing right, but he's killing good people at the same time at times and accidentally doing it. So there's definitely a, a moral compass that's a little uh, off-putting for Joe joe's character but going into this new season i'm just okay new setting new characters in particularly the character played who's played loves in the show she is in one of my favorite horror pieces of all time which is uh, the haunting on hill house so i was very excited to see her and there's some other characters i'm like okay i'm gonna give this to season two of you a watch and i'm just gonna go out and say it i really enjoyed this season two i thought that they had some some repetitive beats from season one, but they added in a new twist to some of the elements. Like they would use certain characters to represent certain characters from season one, and they would have a certain kind of characteristic to them, but they would put a twist on them, or they would, you know, approach a certain storyline that we saw from season one, but then add something different to it. So I appreciated that about the show. Uh, of course, the performances from our main character, Joe, I think he does the character or the actor does a good job of really towing the line for on paper we know that joe is a creep or i should say will in season two we know he's a creep he's not a good guy everything he touches turns to rot or they just die or they just become toxic so we know that but he the actor does such a great job are bringing this charisma and this charm to this character that you can see how people can get kind of caught up in this web, male and female characters. So I really like the actor there. And like I said, there's some new characters in this season. Again, we're in this new setting. We're in LA and I like how this show kind of portrays LA and how everyone's kind of cutthroat and looking out for themselves. And I also like what I also like that they carried into season two was the whole idea of social media, how everyone kind of has two different lives. There's a life that they portray on social media and there's a life that actually takes place in reality. So I like that they touch on things like that but in particular there were some new characters like i said love who's played by the extra actress uh, victoria who was in haunted on hill house i thought she was very very well casted and her uh, uh complex character was a fresh take on this love interest for joe and i thought that they went toe for toe you know the advertising the show is joe meets his match and he definitely does in the character love and i really enjoyed the complexity to her character her backstory and her demons that she had in her past i really enjoyed that storyline and also ellie i thought ellie at first she was a little annoying this is it's a teenager character 
who's a neighbor of Joe when he moves to LA in this apartment complex and she lives with her uh, sister Delilah and I like their dynamic but in particular I really enjoyed Ellie I thought you know even though she was annoying at times but it was just the character kind of the character she was playing but I thought that she had a little bit more to her than you initially thought from the beginning of the season so characters were pretty rich I enjoyed the supporting characters a lot more than I did in season one I thought that Love's group of friends were pretty interesting and wasn't as annoying as Beck's character from season one her friends and I thought a lot of the, the different scenarios and situations that Joe was put in this time around definitely kind of put my head in the uh, in in the, in the pillow there, like what's going to happen next? And this is the perfect type of show that gives you that bingeable type of experience. And I thought that you know they really did a good job of kind of giving you the twists and turns. And yes, this show doesn't it isn't perfect. It's as cheesy as cheesy as can be. You know, it's Greg Berlanti, and there's things I love about Greg Berlanti shows. Like you know when I used to be dive, I used to love the CW shows. But then there's a certain thing that Joe Berlanti does. And it, it's a crowd for that. It's an audience for that. Hence that he has like 20,000 shows on, on television right now. But a lot of those tropes, the romantic tropes, some of the love again, off again type of breakup, you know, falling in love and breaking out of love, all that stuff to me works sometimes. But then when they just keep throwing it in there again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing for the show because that's the audience that it's kind of reaching out to. But when we get to those tropes that Greg Berlanti in this show in particular has to offer, and that's some of the stuff I didn't like from season one, that's where I kind of kind of fall out of it. But then, like I said, there's enough meat on the bone for me where I'm just so intrigued to see how the heck is Joe going to get out of this situation or as to say, Will, how is this person going to interact when they find out certain reveals? That's the thing that keeps me watching the show and watching 10 hours worth of it so wrapping up my non-spoiler and then jumping into the spoilers here i really did enjoy this season if you're a fan of season one, I think you're going to enjoy season two. There are some familiar, familiar uh, traits and familiar characteristics from some characters and definitely some familiar plots that we've seen before in season two. But I think there's enough of a creative spin to those familiarities that they that I, that it intrigued me and kept me watching. And ultimately, season I, one, I think it might be a little bit better, if I'm not going to lie. I thought that the characters were more richer, in my opinion, especially the supporting characters. And there's a lot more twists and turns in this season than it is in season one. So that's my nine spoiler review check it out and then once you guys check out the season then you can watch what i'm going to dive into now which is a spoiler portion of this review so for all those that have seen the first 10 episodes or seen the season two of you we're going to dive into the spoilers so you have been warned let's jump right into it that ending, right? So we find out that Love, again, who I thought was a fascinating character, I really enjoyed the twists and turns, and I love how this season really gave Joe, they surrounded him around damaged people. We we found out more about Joe's past, which at first I was just kind of like, if you all, I, I reviewed uh, season three of 13 Reasons Why, which I hated. And the reason I really didn't like this, and this is something I don't like in movies in general, is when they give you a villainous character or a vi uh, character that has a really dark past uh, and, and does terrible things in the present, and then they give you a reason why they're bad. They kind of, I was kind of in that boat for a little bit with Joe when they gave us his mom and his backstory, and we found that he killed his dad and shot him in the chest and all that at first i'm like really you guys are gonna make him seem like a good guy and giving him reasons why he's killing people you know thinking he's doing good but then i thought that by the end of the season that whole backstory kind of made sense and kind of you know didn't put what I thought 13 Reasons did was they just made Bryce seem like a good guy. Like, oh, the reason he's doing this is because of his dad. And that didn't work for me literally at all. And especially the stuff that he was doing. And by the end of the season of 13 Reasons Why, it was just like, why did you even show us that? Because the guy is a douchebag. But I thought that they did a good job of handling Joe's backstory and bringing that into the present. And kind of shaping you of why he's chasing love and why he's chasing this th these women. And ultimately... At the end of the day, when he ends up getting love and finding love, he doesn't, you know, we see that he's kind of trapped. It almost feels like a little bit of Gone Girl where Ben Affleck's character and his wife were not good for each other, but they stayed in a relationship. And I feel like Joe, once he finally got his picket fence, his white house, his family, he wasn't satisfied. He needs to get that chase. He loves chasing that. That's the thrill that keeps him alive. So I love that element in the show. So, you know, that twist, right, that we find out that love killed, um, you know, 40s, uh, a first love. You know, I thought that was very interesting. We find out, which I don't know how the Delilah thing was a little bit off-putting for me. Like, the tone switched so drastically from the entire season when we're, like, finding the murder mystery, who killed Delilah, and the whole acid thing. It was funny, but I just thought it was so totally different from the whole season. But I thought, you know, going back to Delilah, I thought she was actually a pretty interesting character. And that whole subplot, again, when I had mentioned in my non-spoiler portion for those that watched that, I really thought these supporting characters were much more richer in uh, in this season than it was in season two. The whole Delilah subplot with her 
in, Her- in uh, Henderson's storyline. I thought that was very intriguing and in how that kind of wrapped up and how they kind of pieced that together. Even though I thought that some of that stuff, they, you know, I thought that they, the, the, the cops, that whole thing could have been experiment or investigated a little bit more, but I like how that kind of introduced Delilah and Ellie, who I thought was a really great character in this season. Also, the stuff that we got with, you know, Joe again in his past, the stuff with, you know, 40 and his family, which 40 was kind of 50 50 for me in this season. The, the character was playing multiple characters characters, to be honest with you. He played, you know, the douchebag brother at first, the rich kind of privileged character. Then we learned a little bit more about him. Then, you know, him and Joe became a little bit closer and then he wanted to ultimately take out Joe. So he had a lot to work with. So I'm going to give that that character 40 a lot of credit because again, he was someone very similar to Ellie where they could have been very one note, but they ended up being a little bit more richer and had a little bit more depth to their character. And I'm very surprised by how much I ended up enjoying that character like, uh, like I did with Ellie. Also, kind of going into some other supporting characters, you know, we we find out more about Candace, which I think Candace storyline worked on some elements for me, but other times it didn't. Like, I like that she came back into the scenario and we saw what happened to her and that I'm thinking to myself, like, Candace, you really couldn't find anything to get him locked up or to prove your point, but they show you that scene where the police officer kind of told her, you know, you don't have any evidence, and that was kind of sad for her, and I like how that show touches on that storyline, how, you know, women do come out and speak to their stalkers and speak to their, uh, you know, their abusers and how society kind of kind of ignores them and pushes under the rug, the rug. so I like that element, but the, that stuff of Candace really worked for me, but the stuff that didn't work is when we have that lull where Candace was paid off by love to go off and not talk to that family again, the, the Quinn family. And she was gone for like three or four episodes. And then when she came back, it just kind of felt a little sloppy. And ultimately, I know, yes, she was used to be like a plot devo- device to find out the reveal of love. But I thought that they could have explored a little bit more with Candace's backstory and kind of give her a little bit more justice, a little bit more wrap up to her character. Because ultimately she just died without her truth being known, uh, and, you know, except for 40 who ultimately ended up dying as well. So again, I thought that the characters were really rich. Again, I liked her group of friends. I thought that episode four is probably my favorite episode of the season. That's where, this is where the show really shines. We found out in that episode, that's when Henderson dies. The cop got the headphones. Um, you know, once he, the cops saw Joe jaywalking, uh, we find out more about Candace. That's where she came into the season. So that's, that to me is like what the show is all about. And that's what kind of keeps me in this show. I normally don't watch shows like this on a regular basis and there's nothing to knock it against it. Uh, because back in the day I used to watch very similar shows to this. I used to watch the Teen Wolf. I watched all the Greg Berlanti shows. So I know what this show has to offer, but as I've gotten older, I've kind of, kind of went away from those shows, but there's something about this show show that just keeps me intrigued. Again, it's like the Dexter effect. It's like, how is this person getting away with all this? And how are they going to get caught if they're going to get caught? And ultimately, we know how this season ends. Joe doesn't get caught, but he's still in his the way I look at this overall season is he's still trapped in that cage. He's still trapped in this mindset because he ultimately, he gets what he's been looking for, but it's not exactly what he wants. He loves the chase. He loves the thrill of finding, finding these broken people and trying to fix them. But now that he has that, what is it going to lead to? Which brings me to my next question Why, as I wrap up this review here. What now for season three? You know, we get that last scene. We see Joe has his house now. You know, we see Love is pregnant with their girl or baby girl, which I thought she was lying at first, but it ended up being true. And also very interesting to see if... One thing I want to know for you all, knowing know, knowing now what love was about, do you think she killed her husband who, you know, had, I assume, had cancer or had some type of illness? Do you think she killed him because he wasn't able to get her the family she wanted? I want to know you guys' theories on that in the comments below. But we see the season, Joe sees a girl reading a book, which I thought for like two seconds let me know this theory or let me know you guys' thoughts on this. Is Beck really dead? Because again, Candace, he thought was dead. Again, we didn't necessarily see Beck die. She kind of, you know, when he had the hallucinations, I think it was episode two with the bruises on her neck, but we didn't really see a body. So it makes me think, I was thinking for two seconds that was going to be Beck reading that book, which is still open to that. But I would love to know if you all think, you know, I think that Beck is dead, but I wouldn't be surprised if they bring her back in some capacity for season three. But it's alluding to Joe finding some new challenge, finding his name. Uh, she's into books, into reading. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with season three. And by season three, will we, will the baby be born? What, what state would the relationship be between love and Joe? So I'm on board again. I wasn't the biggest fan of how season one ended again. I wasn't the biggest fan of the love 
the, the chemistry between Beck and Joe, but I really enjoyed uh, Joe and Love's relationship, and I'm, I'm very excited to see where that goes in the season three. So all in all, I'm going to recommend, again, for the, if you're watching a spoiler, I liked it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, did you like season two more than season one like I did? Did you find the characters just as intriguing as I did? Let me know some of your favorite parts, some of the things you didn't like. Will you return to watch the season three? Let me know all your comments in the comments below. Let's have some dialogue down there. As for what you can watch over the weekend, for those that watch this review, what else do I have available? I have my Witcher review. I talked about some movies that are currently out now, like Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, uh, Uncut Gems, uh, Little Women recently. So I got a lot of movie content that you guys can watch as far as reviews. And then what to keep an eye out for. I got the season finale of The Mandalorian, the Servant latest season, and I hope to go see 1917 pretty soon. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to have a lot of top 10, top 10 movies uh, for horror in the decade, favorite superhero movies of the decade. Top 10 of 2019. What I'm hoping that, or what's my most anticipated moves for 2020. So, a lot of content coming pretty soon. So, again, thank you all for watching this review. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my social media accounts where we can have more discussions about these things that we love movies and TVs and everything in between. Uh, let's have some discussions on the social medias. Thank you all again for watching this review, and we'll see you in the next video.